What is currently happening, programs? Welcome to The Grid VR, where I'll be bringing you this week's news in virtual reality. It's Saturday the 30th of September, 2017, and all I can say this week is, take my money, then give it back. We've got Gunfire Games taking us to other suns, Crow Team taking us to other worlds, budget cuts taking us to another year, and much more. Today, I'm gonna cover off the main events to keep you in the loop, so stay locked, Crush that like button, enjoy, and welcome to The Grid VR. Gunfire Games, the team behind Darksiders and the more recent VR titles Kronos and Dead and Buried, are running a free open beta weekend for their upcoming roguelite space exploration first-person shooter from other suns. You will be trapped on the wrong side of a wormhole with dodgy intergalactic corporations and shifty space pirates and have to crew manage and first person shoot your way out of dodge. The game can be played in single player or co-op mode with up to three players where the AI will fill in the two empty chairs required to maintain the ship if you decide to go it alone, you crazy lone wolf you. Being roguelite, the game features procedurally generated levels as well as permadeath, which means that if you die, you stay dying. However, the game is only over once the last real player carks it. And if you die before your friends, despite letting everyone down, though we both know you're just taking one for the team, instead of being dropped into a spectator mode, you will instead be able to control a low powered bot unit to help out around the ship until the last of your friends also takes one for the team. You can choose to move freely about your ship if motion sickness isn't a factor, or a comfort movement mode puts you in a first person perspective while you are standing still and then cuts to a third person view when you move. Much like you may have seen as an option in the Doom 3 BFG VR mod, which you can try out in this video here. This one's an Oculus exclusive and you will need touch controllers to play the beta. The reports are coming through that Revive is letting Vive users join in. The latest NVIDIA drivers included specific driver optimizations for this beta, so if you haven't already, go ahead and download those, and you can also join the Discord chat over at foss.gunfiregames.com to talk with the devs, ask questions, and arrange multiplayer sessions. Given that this game mixes elements from big selling games like first person shooters, crew management like FTL, and co-op like Borderlands, this game could be big. I'm really looking forward to it, and with Gunfire Games at the helm, chances are high that this outing could be an absolute winner. The open beta is on now, and runs until midnight Sunday PST time, which is 6pm Monday evening Melbourne Australia time, or 8pm Monday New Zealand time. So get on board if this sounds like your kind of bag. Ever wanted to stretch your patience and mental fortitude while simultaneously questioning the nature of existence and the human condition? Well, Crow Team's critically acclaimed puzzle game, The Talos Principle, has been given a full VR release date of October the 17th. The game is set in some old ass ruins, fully equipped with some new ass technology, where you have to rearrange beams of light and redirect a variety of threats in order to progress through the story, unlocking some deep and meaningful shit as you go. The Road to Gehenna DLC will be included with this release, which adds four additional episodes that contain some of the game's most interesting and perplexing challenges. Rifters and Vivers alike can enter the gates, and room scale, standing, and seated modes are available, as well as teleport and free locomotion movement options. So, whatever your preference, Crow Team can accommodate. This game was previously playable with Vorpix or a forced VR mode but neither of those compared to the beauty of an actual native VR option, and the reports so far are saying that the game is actually right at home in a VR setting. No pricing has been set as yet, but the devs have chimed in on the Steam forums saying that they will do right by all owners of the flat version with an appropriate discount. Sounds great, and you can absolutely count me in. Coming out of the woodwork and riding the delay train is Budget Cuts, the VR stealth portal game for the HTC Vive from Neat Corp. The ingeniously teleport orientated game where you have to sneak up on robot sentries and disable them using your trusty knife was originally demoed way back in April last year, which you can still play now 
email and followed by a post on Reddit from one of the developers at Neat Corp stating that the game would see a 2017 release with an estimated four to six hours of playtime. Since then, however, it has pretty much been radio silence with the exception of echoes from Steam users' fears of a game never made. All that changed this week though when one of the devs answered the call from Road to VR stating that the team aren't wasting time on PR but are instead working on the game like a lot. On top of that, the Steam Store page has been updated to a 2018 release and the devs confirmed that this would be in the earlier stages of next year, so soon come. Exciting news and definitely worth the wait. And if you want to see what all the fuss is about, check the description below for a link to the demo. And briefly, Oculus refunds are now a thing. Yeah. In line with Steam refunds, and the law in most countries Oculus are trading in, if you have owned a game for less than 14 days and played it for less than two hours, you can request a refund for titles on the Oculus Store. Great for consumers as it keeps developers honest, but could be a double-edged sword as smaller dev teams may get discouraged or further on the negative side of finances if users abuse this policy. Still, it's the law and it's good to see Oculus stepping up as Valve was pre previously forced to do while kicking and screaming through the courts. Tequila Works, who bought us the highly rated Deadlight and the Sexy Brutale games, have teased the trailer of their upcoming VR-only, non-linear murder mystery game, The Invisible Hours. According to the site, you must unravel the dark truth behind the murder of the last arriving guest in a sprawling mansion, which is now occupied by a group of strangers who have received an invitation from Nikola Tesla himself, promising them all a chance to atone for past sins. What sets this one apart from the rest, aside from VR, is you are invisible to the cast of characters and you must decide where to be in the mansion and at what time in order to find the killer by exploring an intricate web of interwoven stories and unearthing and deciphering clues. To me, this one gives off a Wilson's Heart, Cluedo kind of vibe and I can't wait to see who done it when the game releases on October the 10th. The VR Vault Ultron experience has hit the shelves this week and has turned out to be an on-rails shooter where you control Lance and his blue lion. You can't actually die in this game, which to me makes it more of an experience, and aiming is courtesy of Gunface, so where you look, you shoot. And it will run you about 45 minutes to an hour, though about 30% of that is going to be cutscenes. The game is 15 bucks on the Oculus Store and Steam, so not what I'd call worth it, unless of course you have a massive soft spot for the series. You could do a lot worse for your pennies. Also riding the delay train this week is the gallery, Heart of the Emberstone, which has been pushed back to October the 18th. In all honesty, I'm not too sore about this though, as a little extra weight is worth that little extra polish, in my opinion. We'll get around four to six hours of gameplay for 30 bucks when it does hit the stores, and a 10% bundle discount if you purchase episodes one and two together Together, as well as a complete the bundle discount for programs like me who already own and love episode one. Episode one is also 50% off on Steam now until October the 4th, so now is definitely the time to pick that up and then take advantage of the bundle discount when the game releases. And in my opinion, this is the way you should release sequels. A program called As The Wizard, whose username checks the fuck out, has posted a clip of a photogrammetry 3D scan of a lake house fly-through on Reddit this week. For those of you who don't know, photogrammetry is a technique that takes a series of ideally high quality images, around 400 in this instance, from a decent camera and stitches those images together, then builds a two scale 3D environment. And of course, with VR, you can now step inside those environments and walk around. So essentially, input photos, output environment. As has then imported the file to Tilt Brush, 
patched up some holes in the capture and then recorded this clip from inside VR. This shit blows my mind and really, really makes me excited for the day that tech can simplify this type of quality for the everyday user. If you want to check out more of As The Wizard's wizardry, then check the description below for a link to his Sketchfab page. A Twitter user called Walking Cat has put up images of what is supposedly a Windows Mixed Reality headset from Samsung, who made the Gear VR in partnership with Oculus. The pics show off two front-facing cameras for six degrees of freedom inside-out tracking, a PSVR-style head strap complete with AKG headphones that look eerily similar to the headphones on a Rift, and some motion controllers. Unsure if this is legit or not, but sometimes it's just a little fun to gossip. And we may find out for sure on October the 3rd when Microsoft holds its mixed reality event in San Francisco. And finally, a bunch of clinics in the UK are trying out boob goggles, which allow women to view their potential breasts in VR before they commit to the procedure. Awesome idea, and all jokes aside, this could save me a fortune in cheap lipstick, tissue paper, and bras. Know what I'm saying? No? Shit. And that's this week on The Grid VR. If you have more you would like to add, then hit me up in the comments below and let's discuss. And if you like this video, then crush that like button, hit the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.